All right, guys, it is Saturday, July 22nd, and we are on first book of Maccabees here in our Bible in the year, chapter 10. And we'll start with the prayer in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, God, for this day. We love you, God. Please guide us in your reading, your word, God, and help us to have the strength and energy and stamina to be enlightened by it today. In your name we pray, amen. God. Revolt of Alexander. In the year 160, Alexander, who was called Epiphanes, son of Antiochus, came up and took Ptolemyus. He was accepted and began to reign there. When King Demetrius heard of it, he mustered a very large army and marched out to engage him in combat. Demetrius sent a letter to Jonathan written in peaceful terms to pay him honor, for he said, Let us be the first to make him uh, let's be the first to make peace with him before he makes peace with Alexander against us, since he will remember all the wrongs we have done to him, his brothers and his nation. So Demetrius authorized Jonathan, as his ally, to gather an army and, pro and procure arms. And he ordered the hostages in the citadel to be released to him. Accordingly, Jonathan went up to Jerusalem and read the letter to all the people. <clears throat> the men of the citadel were struck with fear when they heard that the king had given him authority to gather an army. They released the hostages to Jonathan, and he gave back and he gave them back to their parents. <clears throat> Thereafter, Jonathan dwelt in Jerusalem and began to build and restore the city. He ordered he ordered the workmen to build the walls and encircle Mount Zion with square stones for its fort for its fortification. For its fortification. <clears throat> Which they did. The foreigners in the strongholds that their chides had built took flight. Each one of them left his place and returned to his own country. Only in Bethzur did some remain of those who had abandoned the law the com and the commandments. For they used it as a place of refuge. Jonathan supports Alexander. King Alexander heard of the promises that De Demetrius had made to Jonathan. He was also told of the battles and valiant deeds of Jonathan. <clears throat> Wait a second. Did we read chapter 10 yesterday? Okay. Never mind. We did not read chapter 10 yesterday, guys. All right. Only in Bethsur did some remain of those who had abandoned the law and the commandments, for they used it as a place of register, as a place of refuge. Jonathan supports Alexander. King Alexander heard the promises that Demetrius had made to Jonathan. He was also told of the battles and valiant deeds of Jonathan and his brothers, and the troubles he and the troubles that they had endured. He said, "Shall we ever find another man like him?" Let us now make him our friend and ally. So he sent Jonathan a letter written in the terms King Alexander sends greetings to his brother Jonathan. We have heard of you, and you are a mighty warrior and worthy to be our friend. We, are, we have therefore appointed you today to be high priest of your nation. You are to be called the king's friend, and you are to look after our interests and preserve amity, and preserve amity with us. He also sent him a purple robe and a crown of gold. Jonathan put on the sacred vestments in the seventh month of the year, 160, at the Feast of Booths. And he gathered an army and procured many arms. When Demetrius heard of these things, he was distressed and said, Why have we allowed Alexander to get ahead of us by gaining the friendship of the Jews and thus strengthening himself? I too will write them conciliatory words and offer dignities and gifts, so that they may be an aid to me. So he sent them this message. King Demetrius sends greetings to the Jewish nation. We have heard 
Now we have heard how you have kept the treaty with us and continued in our friendship and had and not gone over to our enemies. And we are glad. Continue therefore to keep faith with us, and we will reward you with favors in return for what you do in our behalf. We will grant you many exemptions and will bestow gifts on you. I now free you, as I also exempt all the Jews, from the tribute, the salt tax, and the crown levies, instead of collecting the third of the grain and half of the fruit of the trees that should be my share, I renounce the right from this day forward. Neither now nor in the future will I collect them from the land of Judah, and from the land of Judah, or from the three districts annexed from Samaria. Let Jerusalem and his let Jer, let Jerusalem and her territory her tithes and her tolls be sacred and free from tax. I also yield my authority over the citadel in Jerusalem. And I transfer it to the high priest, that he may put it that he may put in it such men as he shall choose to guard it. Every one of the Jews who has been carried into captivity from the land of Judah into any part of my kingdom, I set at liberty without ransom. And let all their taxes, even those on their cattle, be cancelled. But all feast days, Sabbaths, new moons, festivals, appointed days, and the three days that precede each fast, each feast day of immunity and exemption and exemption from an exemption from for every Jew in my kingdom. Let no man have authority to exact payment from them or to molest any of them in any manner. Let thirty thousand Jew be, Jews be enrolled in the king's army and allowances be given them as is due to all the king's soldiers. Let some of them be stationed in the king's principal strongholds, and of th these let some, of, let some be given positions of trust in the affairs of the kingdom. Let their superiors and their rulers be taken from among them, and let them follow their own laws, as the king has commanded in the land of Judah. Let the three districts that have been added to Judea from the province of Samaria be incorporated with Judea so that they may be under one man and obey no other authority than the high priest. The Ptolemais and its confines I give as a present to the sanctuary in Jerusalem for the necessary expenses of the sanctuary. I make yearly personal grant of 15,000 silver shekels out of the royal revenues from the appropriate places. All the additional funds that the officials did not hand over as they had done in the first years, shall henceforth be handed, oh, and shall henceforth be handed over for the services of the temple. Moreover, the dues of five thousand silver shekels that used to be taken from the revenue of the sanctuary every year shall be cancelled, since these funds belong to the priests who perform the services. Whoever takes refuge in the temple of Jerusalem or in any of its precincts. precincts because of money he owes the king, or because of any other debt, shall be released together with all the goods he possesses in my kingdom. The cost of rebuilding and restoring the structures of the, of the sanctuary shall be covered out of the royal revenue. Likewise, the cost of building the walls of Jerusalem and fortifying it all around and of building walls in Judea shall be donated from the royal revenue. When Jonathan and the people heard these words, they neither believed nor accepted them. For they remembered the great evil that Demetrius had done in Israel and how sorely he had afflicted them. They therefore decided in favor of Alexander, for he had been the first to address them peace, peaceably, and they remained his allies for the rest of his life. King Alexander gathered together a large army and encamped opposite Demetrius. The two kings joined battle, and when the army of Demetrius fled, Alexander pursued him and overpowered his soldiers. He pressed the battle hard until sunset, and Demetrius fell that day. Treaty of Ptolemy and Alexander. Alexander sent ambassadors to Ptolemy, king of Egypt, with this message. Now that I have returned to my realm, take my seat of, on the throne of my fathers and establish my rule by crushing Demetrius and gaining control of my country. For I engaged him in battle, defeated him and his army, and recovered the royal throne. Let us now establish friendship with each other. Give me your daughter for my wife, and as your son-in-law, I will give to you and to her gifts worthy of you. King Ptolemy answered in these words, Happy the day on which you return. 
to the land of your fathers and took your seat on their royal throne. I will do for you what you have written, but meet me in Ptolemais so that we may see each other and I will become your father-in-law as you have pr proposed. So Ptolemy with his daughter Cleopatra set out from Egypt and came to Ptolemais in the year 162. There, there King Alexander met him and Ptolemy gave him his daughter Cleopatra in marriage. Their wedding was celebrated at Ptolemais with great splendor according to the custom of kings. King Alexander also wrote to Jonathan to come and meet him. So he went with pomp to Ptolemais, where he met the two kings and gave them and their friends silver and gold and many gifts, and thus won their favor. Some pestilent Israelites transgress transgressors of the law united against him to accuse him, but the king paid no heed to him. No, the, but the king paid no heed to them. He ordered Jonathan to be divested of his ordinary garments and to be clothed in royal purple. And so it was done. The king also made him seated at his side. He said to his magistrates, Go with him to the center of the city and make a proclamation that no one is to bring charges against him on any grounds or be troublesome to him in any way. When the accusers saw the honor paid to him in the proclamation and the purple with which he was clothed, they all fled. The king also honored him by numbering him among his chief friends and made him military commander and governor of the province. So Jonathan returned to, in peace and happiness to Jerusalem. Victory over Apollonius. In the year 165, Demetrius, son of, son of Demetrius, Demetrius, son of Demetrius, came from Crete to the land of his fathers. When King Alexander heard of it, he was greatly troubled and returned to Antioch. Demetrius appointed Apollonius governor of Cleos, Cleo, Syria. Having gathered a large army, Apollonius pitched his camp at Gemnia. From there, he sent his. From there, he sent this message to Jonathan the high priest: "You are the only one who resists us. I am laughed at and put to shame on your account. Why you? Why are you displaying power against us in the mountains?" in the mountains. If you have confidence in your forces, come come down now to us in the plain. Let us test each other's strength in there in the city. Let us test each other's strength there. The city forces are on my side. Inquire and learn who I am and who the others are who are helping me. Men say that you cannot make a stand against us because your fathers were twice put to flight in their own land. Now you two will be unable to withstand our cavalry cavalry and such a force of as this is the plain is the plain where there is not a stone or a pebble or a place to flee. When Jonathan heard the message of Apollonius, he was roused. Choosing ten thousand men he sent out from Jerusalem to help him. He pitched camp near Joppa but the men in the city shut him out because Apollonius had a garrison there. When the Jews besieged it, the men of the city became afraid and opened the gates. And so Jonathan took the possessions of Joppa. When Apollonius heard of it, he drew numerable, numerable infantry. He marched on as Azotus, as though he would, as though he were going on through the country. But at the same time. He advanced into the plain because he had such a large number of horsemen to rely on. Jonathan followed him to Estos, and they engaged in battle. Apollonius, however, had left a thousand cavalry in the hiding behind them. When Jonathan discovered that there was an ambush behind him, his army was surrounded from morning until evening. They showered his men with arrows, but his men held their ground as Jonathan had commanded. Whereas the enemy's horses became tired out, when the horsemen were exhausted, Simon attacked the phalanxes. Simon attacked the phalanx, overwhelmed it, and put it to flight. The horsemen, too, were scattered over the plain. The enemy fled to Esotus and, and entered Beth Dagon, the temple of their idol, to save themselves. But Jonathan burned and plundered Esotus with its neighboring towns and destroyed by fire both the temple of Dagon 
and the men who had taken refuge, refuge in it. Those who fell by the sword together with those who were burned alive came to about 8,000 men. When Jonathan left there and pitched his camp at Eshkelon, and the people of that city came out to meet him with great pomp, he and his men then returned to Jerusalem laden with much booty. When King Alexander heard of these events, he, he accorded new honors to Jonathan. He sent him a gold buckle, such as is usually given to the king's kinsmen. He also gave him Ekron and all its territory as a possession. Chapter 9, Alliance with to Alliance of Demetrius and Ptolemy. We will begin tomorrow, and with that we'll close in the prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus Christ.